In today's latest vehicles, when we install a custom car audio system, we oftentimes need to retain the stock head unit as the system source. If you have ever interfaced with a factory car audio system in order to get the signal for an aftermarket car audio system, you are likely familiar with some of the challenges. One is that the factory source might have an unchangeable equalization baked into the source to make the factory system sound good. Ideally, we want to counteract and correct this equalization when we add an aftermarket system system with new components. Another challenge is some factory audio system channels are bandwidth limited, so if we are looking to add something like a subwoofer, we need to make sure that the signal we are using for it does in fact have bass. But the latest curveball we are seeing is that more and more OEM manufacturers are including an all-pass filter on the factory source unit, whether it's a factory head unit or a factory premium amplifier. Are these car manufacturers just trying to make it so that we can't upgrade the system anymore? Why are are they doing this in the first place and what is an all-pass filter and how can we measure for it? What should we do if we have to keep that factory source and it has one? Must we get rid of them or can they actually be helpful? Hey guys, I'm Mark. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the channel where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's discuss. So let's begin with the issue that an all-pass filter solves. First, we need to understand that for ideal stereo sound, we sit an equal distance between each of the speakers. By doing this, the amount of time that it takes for the sound to arrive at our listening position from each speaker is equal. What this means is that the sound from each speaker is going to be in phase at our listening position. As you can imagine, that ideal situation of being perfectly equidistant from each speaker is not going to happen in a vehicle. Speakers are different distances from us in our listening position and reflections are common. In a vehicle, because we are different distances from each speaker, when we're at our listening position, if we're listening to a stereo signal, some of the frequencies when you combine those two signals together are going to be out of phase. If you were to measure this with an RTA microphone, you would see some dips in the response or nulls at these particular locations. But lucky for us, we do have a solution for that, and that comes in the form of using time alignment with a digital signal processor. What we can do is let's imagine we're in the driver's seat of the vehicle. The driver's speaker is much closer to us than the passenger side speaker. So what we can do is we can actually delay the signal that is coming out of that closer speaker so that that signal will arrive at our listening position at the same time as the further speaker. Ideally, by using this delay, the sound arrives from all speakers at our listening position at the exact same time, putting them all back in phase. The problem though is, as you can imagine, now the sound in the passenger seat is no longer ideal. So that raises the question, what is a way that we can improve a phase issue and improve performance in both seats? Well, we can add something called an all-pass filter, and that is why these manufacturers are using this in a stock system. So the next question is, what exactly is an all-pass filter? Well, you may be familiar with crossovers and how they change the frequency output above or below a certain point that we set that crossover. An all-pass filter is a little bit different in that it doesn't change the output, but instead it changes the phase at a particular frequency. I'm going to do a demo for you guys in a minute here to make it a little bit more understandable. The thing you need to understand most is that an all-pass filter passes all frequencies equal in gain. Thus the name all-pass filter, what it changes again is the phase. A quick side note, there are two common types of all-pass filters that we will be dealing with often in car audio, and that's a first order all-pass filter and a second order all-pass filter. A first order all-pass filter goes from zero to 180 degrees. In other words, at a certain frequency, it's going to be in phase, and then it's going to roll off and be 180 degrees out of phase for the rest of the frequency response. A second order all-pass filter is going to go from zero degrees to 180 degrees back to zero degrees. So it goes from in phase to out of phase back to in phase and again this is kind of confusing but we're going to do some measurements right now that will help this become more understandable. So in order to look at our measurements we have a bit of a test set up here and I want to explain to you guys everything that's going on here but first a quick shout out to our show sponsor Audio Control and the 
DMRTA. The DMRTA test device is going to allow us to test these all pass filters because we're currently using the speaker level signal input into it in order to analyze the electrical signal. The DMRTA connects to a computer and we can use the software for a number of different testing tools here. We can use this as a voltage meter. We can also use it as an RTA for both measuring the electrical response or the acoustic response with a microphone connected. We could use a microphone to measure SPL. We could also use it to check polarity. And finally, we can also use this device as an oscilloscope. Tons of functionality out of this tool. So if you wanna learn more, check out the links down in the video description. So for our test setup, what I have going on is an aftermarket head unit connected to a D-6200. So this is a DSP integrated amplifier. And I want you guys to envision that this is a factory audio system. The reason I'm using this aftermarket amplifier is I can easily turn on and off the actual all pass filters. Obviously you can't do that with your factory system, but what we want to be doing here is just looking at those all pass filters using this test device. So imagine if you will, that this is just the factory OEM amplifier or OEM head unit, and we've connected to the speaker level outputs and we're analyzing with our measurement tool. All right guys, so let's actually hop onto the software here to take a closer look and do some testing. So on screen right now, this screen that my cursor is on, this is our RTA measurement. So this is where we're measuring the electrical response out of our quote unquote factory amplifier. Right now we're playing pink noise on the system and you can see that we have a full range signal. Now over here on the other screen, this is what I'm actually using to control the DSP software on our factory amplifier. So remember anything that you're gonna see me doing over on this screen isn't something that you would normally do. This is just for me to be able to simulate and turn on and off those all pass filters. So right now I have both channels of our factory amplifier playing. So you can see that we have this response here on the RTA. And if we mute one of these channels, as we expect, we're going to see a drop in the response on our RTA. By muting one of the channels on my stock amplifier, basically what I'm doing is simulating just not being connected to that with measurement probes. The first thing I wanna point out is right now you can see I don't have any all pass filters turned on and you can see what the response looks like. I'm going to turn on a first order all pass filter. You can see that that doesn't change the actual response we're measuring on the RTA at all. The same goes for if I turn on a second order all pass filter. You're not going to see any measurement change in the RTA response when you're only measuring that one channel. So let's turn off all the all pass filters again and let's unmute this channel. So now what we're simulating is that we've connected to both a left and a right channel on our factory amplifier or head unit. We're basically summing the signal. Now let's turn on one of those all pass filters again on just one of the channels. I'll turn on a second order all pass filter. This is at one kilohertz or a thousand hertz and let's give it a cue of one. And we can see now when we measure this summed response, there's this huge null in the response. The reason for that is because of the all pass filter. At one kilohertz on channel number one, there's an all pass filter. So it is going 180 degrees out of phase from our other channel that we are summing with it. Now, if I turn on a first order all pass filter, you can see since this only gives us an 180 degree change at one kilohertz here, it's going to completely be out of phase everything above that. Let's go back to a second order all pass filter here. And remember right now we're still currently connected to both channels. By taking these summed measurements here, we've determined that there is in fact an all pass filter. And that's because if we measure just the right channel here, you can see that we have a nice flat response. If we measure just the left channel here, we again have a nice flat response, but if we measure the two channels summed together, we see a null. Now, what if we wanted to counteract this all pass filter? Now we need to assume that we are connected to our aftermarket DSP device, whatever we're using to quote unquote, correct this particular all pass filter here. What we could do is imagine that we don't know any of this information here. We don't know that it's at one kilohertz or that it has a Q of one. What we could do is we know just by looking at the RTA data here that it's around one kilohertz it looks like. So let's imagine that we are controlling an all pass filter for our channel number two here. We know based on the shape of the null, the fact that it's just a dip here, it's going to be a second order all pass filter. It wasn't a complete cut when we summed everything together. So it's not gonna be a first order all pass filter. So that allows us to pick second order. And obviously I'm already at the values that I need here, but let's just see what something else looks like here. So if we are at 460, we can see 
You know, that's not going to sum correctly. We could kind of just go through the data here and I'm just slowly dragging this bar to the right. And right there, you can see that we have a pretty good response. It's still dipping a little bit. So you can see using more basic measurement software, we're at least able to get in the ballpark of correcting this. The point is here, even without knowing that value, we're able to just see through the summation data and get a pretty close counteracting all-pass filter on the opposite channel that's going to give us a nice summation. There is a more advanced way that we can use in order to determine the exact phase and look at that phase relationship of that initial all-pass filter. If you guys would like to see a more advanced video going into that detail, be sure to let me know. So now we know how to identify if there is an all-pass filter coming from the source, but why do we need to know anyways? Well, do keep in mind that we know the benefits of an all-pass filter. It can allow the manufacturer to improve the staging for a two-seat tune or to fix other holes in response. But if we are going for a one-seat tune, the presence of an all-pass filter can impact how we apply time alignment. I say this often, but I want you guys to keep in mind that everything in custom car audio is about trade-offs. The ideal thing about doing a one-seat tune is we can make sure that everything is completely in phase at our listening position. But the downfall that we mentioned earlier is we only have an ideal performance in that one location. The upside of keeping an appropriate all-pass filter is we now have better performance in two different listening positions, but we need a filter applied at multiple different frequencies in order to correct them. This makes it far more difficult to correct the full range of frequency information using all-pass filters. So if we do detect the presence of all pass filters, what should we do? Well, there's not one clear cut answer. It depends on the application. If your goal is to achieve a one seat tune and you're using a factory system that has an all pass filter, you can counteract that all pass filter by applying the same filter on the other channel, much like we did in our demonstration. There are some correction processors on the market that use a very similar process in order to correct for a factory all-pass filter. The other option though, is to keep the all-pass filters and put them to good use. Again, the manufacturers of the vehicle, they actually add those most of the time for a good reason. So it's important to properly collect data and measure the acoustic performance of the factory system so that we can have an understanding why they might be there in the first place. It's very possible that they'll be a valuable addition to your system. And with that said, the reason that aftermarket digital signal processor software has the ability to add all-pass filters isn't just to counteract them and offset them, it's because we could also put them to use and implement them and create them from scratch even if our factory system doesn't have them. A big important point to remember here is that almost all DSPs on the market allow you to create multiple tunes. So you could always create a one seat tune or you could take advantage of the benefits of an all pass filter if you need to in order to create a two seat tune. Once you understand all pass filters in their entirety, you can use them to your advantage for different system goals. So whew, I hope you guys are still with me. All pass filters are definitely quite the complex topic, but hey, I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you think about all pass filters? And if you guys have anything that you would like to add, the community always benefits from it. So let me know in a comment down below. Don't forget to measure your car audio system. You can check out the DMRTA from our show sponsor, Audio Control. You guys can learn more at the link down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Jerry, Joseph, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team for making these videos possible. And thank you guys for tuning in and watching.